Hey everybody, it's Regina here again, and this time I'm here to show you the version 3 of setting up Asana as your agreements tracker. Um, if you haven't seen the first two videos, please go check those out so that you can see the level of difficulty increasing as we set this up, but also the kinds of features and functions you can have um, as you make the setup a little bit more complex. So this is obviously the third version. It's gonna be the hardest version, but there's also the most reward and payout um, in using this version. So without further ado, let's jump into it. In the previous version that I have shared, um, we already went through these profiles. I've talked about how um, the, there are so many pros in setting up a profile like this versus doing something like the Asana out of the box solution with my tasks. And so um, if you haven't checked that out, please go watch that first. Um, but assuming that you already have all of the information you need there, um, I want to jump into the third uh, iteration. And that third iteration is not only tracking your agreements in Asana, but running your entire team meetings in Asana. Um, you know, there there is actually one company that Matt coaches right now, which is Sonder with Francis Davidson and Arthur Chang, their chief of staff, walked me through this. Um, and we thought the idea was so good that um, we implemented it into our own company. And of course, Sonder is a 2000 person company. And so they've had a lot of success in uh, tracking all their agreements in Asana and, and running it this way and tracking all their meetings as well. We do it slightly differently. And so I'm just going to show you how we set ours up. <clears throat> And so as you can see here, I've shown you this side panel before. I'm gonna move my profile picture over here so you can get a better look here. So all of these are our profiles um, and we go down here and there are all of these blue ones here that are called um, team, which are all of our team meetings and they're all uh, colored blue. And so I'm going to go ahead and click into one of them, which is the team coaching meeting. This is the meeting doc that I use along with my EA, Trisha and Matt. And uh, as you can see, this is a meeting doc. We have set up different sections here following the Mashari method. So in the very top, there are reminders. So we want to make sure that we're video recording each of our meetings. And I have also set a reminder on who is part of this meeting. Um, and then there are also steps here uh, for the pre-meeting. And so I would like to always have a section that says what is the intended outcome of this meeting uh, so that we know what the purpose is. Um, and so I've gone ahead and set um, a subtask here to talk about, you know, what is the intended outcome here? I think I wrote one and Matt wrote one and Trish wrote one. So we pinned all of these up here. Um, and so that's some pre-meeting things to do. And then two more reminders here. We have meeting owner or whomever wants to review profiles should do that ahead of the meeting. And so if I go into details here, you can see here that each of us have our profiles and that way we can do the accountability step where we check each other's profiles and we see what everybody has been up to and we recap whether all of those tasks that people agreed to do have been done. Um, and that should be done pre-meeting so that there's no time wasted in reviewing actions. And then lastly, we have DRIs filling in updates for OKR. So there is an OKR section. Um, let me see where it is under accountability. And um, it's, it's the responsibility of the DRI to make sure that this is updated each week um, before we go into the actual meeting itself. So people can do pre-reading, they can comment in any questions or concerns that they have uh, and less time is wasted as a result. So that's the pre-meeting section. Then we've got connection for good things. And so that's the part that gets the joy juices flowing. We want people to be um, connecting with each other and celebrating each other in their lives, both personal and at work. And so each of these uh, good things here we go through. Um, and then we have the accountability section. Like I mentioned, um, each of us have actions towards goals. These are all the things that we do in the pre-meeting um, to review profiles. Um, we don't actually spend time on this um, uh, think live in the meeting, uh, but they are there just for easy access. And then over here, we've got two OKRs that are tied specifically to this meeting. This is super uh, key because as you can see, we've got assignees here. So Matt is the DRI for this OKR or this KPI, and I'm the DRI here. And so each week we have to update the OKR tracker. As you can see, I've got a custom field here that's 
uh, OKR tracker and you can either toggle it as on target or off track uh, at that moment. And then what we do is we go in and we add uh, comments uh, for that week. And so, for example, if I clicked on here and I said, OK, this is the um, today's date, which is the 10th. Um, we are on target for this goal by doing X, Y, and Z. Um, no blockers at this time. That's like a really simple update, but you, and you would probably spend a little bit more time writing in your updates, but you could do that. And then you pin the comment to the very top. So as we go through the weeks, you can quickly scroll up and down and see what people have updated to see if that OKR is on track or not. So that's the accountability section. And then we go into, I'm going to toggle these closed so that we save a little real estate here. We go into topics and issues. And so as you can see, we've checked off a couple of things here from previous uh, meetings. Like I said, you can always toggle it so that it only shows the incomplete ones. Uh, so as there are new topics and issues that show up, we go ahead and add those in here. Um, and then as you can see, I've got task templates here. Now, the way you do task templates is you go to customize. And then there are task templates here. And so anytime I want to spin something up quickly, I can simply set a task template down here. And so for example, if I have an issue proposed solution I'd like to write, I can simply click on that. And you can see here that it's being created and I would name it. So issue proposed solution sample for Loom video. Haha. <laughs> um, and then I click here and I can simply fill it in. So here's the issue. Here's what I did. Here's the proposed solution. That's following uh, Matt's very lightweight um, version of the issue proposed solution or the lightweight version of the rapid. And so once that's done, we can go ahead and click it off and it hides itself because I've got this toggle that's incomplete task. Um, and then under transparency, that's the last part of the meeting where we close it out and we go over feedback. So um, I have this interesting one up here called feedback for team coaching meeting. Um, and that's mostly to talk about whether we gained any value out of this meeting or not. One of the biggest issues that I hear uh, on a constant basis from some of my peers and colleagues is uh, being involved in a lot of meetings that make no sense or there's no clear intended objective or they don't see it as a good use of time. And so the purpose of in the pre-meeting setting the intention of the meeting is to see at the very end whether that intention was fulfilled or whether the purpose was valid. And from there, you can decide whether you want to keep meeting in the same cadence with the same people, or if the meeting doesn't make sense and it should be merged into another meeting or so and so forth. Um, the other thing is with feedback for the specific meeting, you can talk about whether this has to be done live and synchronously, or if you can take it async on Slack or Loom or any of these other tools that make it easy for people to interact on their own time. So that's the feedback section. And of course, we've got feedback for each person. I'll click into mine so you can take a look. Uh, under there, I've got subtasks. So each person that I work directly with has... Um, uh, a subtask here where they can fill in their feedback. So for example, I click in here, this is feedback that my assistant has given me and week over week, she goes ahead and she comments on, um, on uh, the subtask. And this should be pinned at the very top because this is the most recent feedback that she's given me. So that's a little bit about how you can run an entire team meeting in Asana. And um, there are some other things here. So actions, of course, these are the ones that um, we can pipe into our profiles. And that's really the big value add. You're probably wondering, Regina, why did you just spend the last 10 minutes talking to me about running a team meeting in Asana? And the main reason is because as you go through the meeting, you'll be able to agree on actions and those actions can automatically be piped into an actions agreements tracker because you're doing the whole thing in Asana. It takes a little bit more time to learn how to run a meeting properly in Asana. As you can see, this is multi-steps, multi-sections. It's a little complex. The Mashari method overall is a little bit uh, complex with the kind of framework that you have, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes very simple to use. And this is the main uh, source of, um, of value. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle all tasks again really quickly so that I can show you what I'm talking about. So over here under issue proposed solutions, I'm going to fill this out just a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to assign this to myself because I'm the one who's writing it. Right. And here's the issue, what I did propose solution. And then everybody else writes their comments. So Trish might write something, 
sample comment here. And then Matt might also write something. Matt says sample comment here. And then let's say we have a final decision. So the final decision goes here. Or maybe I would put it at the top because it's more important. So let's move that up. Boom, 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 all the way at the top. So final decision, uh, so and so, so uh, action one, action two, action three. Now we've got actions and we say Matt is in charge of this one, Regina is in charge of this one, Trish is in charge of this one. Now what you can do is add a subtask. This is huge. So what I'll do is I'll copy this action here and I'll add it as a subtask and I'll change the person to Matt, okay? And then what I do is I click into here and I just go tab P which adds to a project. You can either go tab P as the shortcut or you can go from here uh, on the three dots. But tab P is a really helpful shortcut. And what I do is I go under team coaching meeting and I move it to actions. Now it's going to automatically uh, pipe into Matt's profile because of an automation that I've created. So over here, this lightning bolt, if you remember from the previous video I did on this, you'll see that I have these rules here. And so this one says anytime um, a task shows up in actions of this meeting and it is assigned to Matt or whoever, right? Um, this rule is for, in this case, it's Matt. It will move to Matt's profile and it saps into his uncategorized section. And from there, I've got a separate rule set up right from Matt's profile, where anytime something shows up from an uncategorized project, that will move it to his next two week sprint. And as you can see right here, it says action one, Matt, and there's context. You can see that it's been tied to the issue proposed solution. And I can click in there and he can see, I made this agreement in the actions tracker from the team coaching meeting, and here it is. It's right there. And so I can do the same thing here. So action two was Regina and action three was Trish. And what we do is if we can, I don't know if we're able to select all of them at the same time, you are. And so from there I go tab, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can edit all of them at the same time. I can't, but um, I go tab P and I go coaching meeting, Let's change it to my name and we'll move it to actions. Same thing. And then I might set a due date for my for myself for next week, right? And as you can see, it's been zapped from my other project and automatically updates because I have the exact same rule set up for uncategorized uh, tax, uh, tasks that have been zapped from other projects or other meeting docs in this case. And the last one, same thing. Oh, I forgot to set a due date for this one, huh? Everything needs a due date. Otherwise you never get things done. The last one is with Trish, same thing. Set her as the owner of this task, tab P, and you go team coaching meeting under actions. And you know, if I were smart, you know what I would do is I would actually move the actions uh, section all the way to the top. Because by default, when you add um, tasks to Asana, it'll pipe to whatever is the first section on top. So I don't know if you guys saw that earlier, but um, if I go into the issue proposed solution again here, you'll see uh, even when I submit it. So I'll go ahead and close this again, X that out and add over here. It shows up as reminders because that's the first section here. So you might want to play around and move that at the very top. I keep it this way and put actions at the bottom because Matt's very particular about that. Maybe he'll change his mind after watching this video. But um, if I move it to actions, once again, the rule runs, it pipes into there. And you can see it's already there, so nothing changed because they already piped in the first time. It is super crucial to pipe into actions rather than piping into the profile directly. Why? Because you wanna make sure that there's context for the task. So for example, let's say I close this out there's nothing here and I go straight here, right? I go to Trish and I go here and I go tab P and I just move it straight to Trish's profile. Well, that's fine and it'll edit and it'll update to her section, right? But if I click into her profile, I don't see that I made 
that action in the agreements tracker. I don't know which meeting this came from. I just see a task and then I'd have to click here and go, oh, that's from the team coaching meeting. And so it's just a little bit more context without having to lift a, an extra finger, right? You don't actually have to do very much more than adding it to the actions tracker. So that's why I insist on adding it directly to the action section of that of that meeting, because um, it'll automatically pipe to everything else anyway. So that's a little bit about the automations here. Super, super, super valuable. The other place I can think of where this is valuable is under feedback. So let's say somebody left feedback for me. Let's say Trisha said, Regina, you suck, da 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 da. <laughs> um, if she said, I wish you would do this, then I would add as a subtask here, Regina, uh, do this, then do that. And now let's say it's a habit, right? I'm going to assign to me, because it's I agreed to it, let's set a really long due date for December 31st, same thing, tab P, and I go ahead and add it to team coaching meeting under actions. Now, um, this is going to show up, and I actually have a specific section in my profile for habits, and so I'll just move it there. But I'll remember, I agreed to this habit that Trish gave me from that feedback doc, in the team coaching meeting. And it, I'll remember that it came from that meeting. So I'll remember who else was in that meeting, who was there to see me make that agreement. Um, and that won't leave me confused. Like, did I make this agreement with Trish on the side? Did she tell me something in Slack and I said I'd do it? Did we have a one-on-one? -on -one? It eliminates any source of confusion and it makes it very, very clear who made the agreement, when the agreement was made and what context super powerful for you to do all of that in one section. So that's a little bit on how you would run a meeting in Asana and why it's so important um, and and uh, powerful. So there's that. And then of course, there's this last section here called magic questions. That's if we want to build connection. And I won't get too much into magic questions because Matt has a separate write up on that. But there is a section here as well. Um, there is a huge benefit in piping into multiple projects. So as you saw, I was piping, um, you know, tasks from this to our profiles and so on and so forth. You can also do that with individual tasks. And so as you can see, if I click here under magic questions for Regina, it's part of many different profiles or sorry, projects. It's part of my profile. So it's there. I can fill it out there. And any of the changes that I make here will also show up here. So these are all actual references. They're not creating new instances every time. It's centralized in one place. And so my magic questions show up in my one-on-one -on -one meeting with Matt. They show up in my profile so I can edit it on my own time. And then they show up in any of these other team meetings that I'm a part of. And so I just fill it out once and I'm done, uh, which is great. And as you can see, I've got a lot of subtasks here on things that I've agreed to. And you can kind of see the different action items I've agreed to during the process of magic questions. Um, I won't get too much into that, but there's this section here as well. And so the benefits of running your entire team meetings in Asana is that you can have many different meeting docs and each of them pipe into a profile and you only have to fill out one update one time. You don't have to update across 5 million Google Docs. You just fill it out on your profile. And if you connect that task into multiple projects, you'll be able to make that update persist across the board in all of the meetings that you're a part of. Really, really valuable. I'll give you another example here. So this Monday meeting, this is the equivalent of um, what you might consider an all hands elsewhere. And so same thing here. Each teammate has their feedback section. Uh, there are issue proposed solutions here that people have um, written and um, their intros and reminders. So each of these are designed the same way. And then of course, as I mentioned in my previous video, with projects, you can actually use templates. And so as you can see here, I've got a template for team meetings. Here's the sections, the rules are already set up here, and you can simply um, use this as a, as a template when you're creating new projects. Same thing here with template one-on-one. -on -one. As you can see, there's this template, there's the button use template, it's a template. I've said template five times, I'm sorry. Um, so anytime there's a new one-on-one -on -one meeting, let's say that you are a manager and you just hired a new direct report, 
boom, this is really simple. All you have to do is make sure that these rules are um, set so that they automatically pipe to someone's profile. And as I mentioned last time, because you've got profiles configured this way, all you have to do is use a template to spin up their profile here as well. This is something that with enough uh, practice, like if you walk an EA through it two or three times, they can take care of creating the profiles, of creating the rules and ma maintaining them across the system. Um, I know that with Sonder, for example, which is a 2000 person company, um, they are planning on hiring one person for each department to make sure that everybody knows how to implement it. And their main responsibility is making sure that everybody is tracking their agreements, using Asana, updating all the stuff using Asana. I think they might be also using Coda a little bit. Um, and so even though we are, you know, less than 10 people company, um, this has been used and proven to work in 2000 people companies. Um, so in case you're wondering about scalability, it's there. Um, so yeah, that's my walkthrough on Asana using the hardest version, which is running all your team meetings um, in Asana and then piping all of your actions using these rules into your profiles and making sure you have this zapped from other projects um, section set up so that anytime anything shows up here, you can make it edit uh, or move the task to the next two week sprint. Hopefully that was helpful to you. And um, if you have any questions, if there was anything that was unclear, please feel free to send me a message. You can email me, you can uh, Twitter DM me, you can reach me any way you'd like. Um, but I'd love to offer clarification because I think once people really grasp this concept, it's really powerful and effective. Thanks. Bye.